Let's talk about maintenance strategies. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to this channel, my name is Zanele. Thanks to those of you guys that have subscribed. If you haven't, press that subscribe button below. Also remember to press that notification button so you can get notifications every time I upload new content. So I've gotten some questions around maintenance strategies. If you checked out my previous video, we discussed a bit around the different types of roles that engineers play in FMCG and in factories, and I made a mention of maintenance engineers. So your maintenance engineers aren't necessarily only mechanical, because you do have maintenance in electrical systems, you've got chemical engineers, even with industrial engineering where you maintain your processes and your systems. So what we'll discuss today is around the different types of maintenance strategies. Leave a comment below if you are in a maintenance type role, also the type of industry that you're working in. I'm keen to hear about the type of maintenance strategy that you've applied for your different systems and your different pieces of equipment. So I'll break it down into three major types of different maintenance strategies that you can deploy. What I'll do is I'll have a second video later on in the week where I'll share with you guys how to implement a different type of maintenance strategy for the type of equipment and risk that you've got at your different facilities. I'll share with you guys three main types of maintenance strategies that you can apply. Let's start with time-based maintenance or preventative maintenance. This is scheduled maintenance that you establish based on whether it's the running cycle of the machine or the lifespan of the machine um, or the rate of operation of your piece of equipment, whether it be a motor, a pump or a belt, whether it be a shaft or your bearings or whatnot. So time-based maintenance is when you've got a calendar and you schedule at what time or after what period you're looking to have that piece of equipment down so you can do maintenance on it. You also define the type of maintenance that you'll do on, on, on a piece of equipment. So example, um, it might be just changing the oil or it might be you stripping out and replacing your bearings completely after a certain period of time. So you'll find different terminology being used. So some, in, some industries call it planned preventative maintenance or time scheduled maintenance or time-based maintenance. But basically it means in a calendar year or say in your 12 months, you know that you're changing a belt after every six months or you know that you're changing a switch after every three months. So you schedule it down that come this time period or come after these number of rotations or after this much tonnage or number of bottles or cans or whatnot of product has been produced, then you bring down the piece of equipment and either inspect or repair or replace it. So the next type of maintenance is your corrective or breakdown maintenance strategy. So this you might define based on inventory level of spares that are readily available and it's a quick and easy change. So you'll have very minimum downtime or this you have because it's a low cost piece of item or equipment um, or because it's such an easy change, not worth having your entire system down to have that piece of equipment changed or replaced out. But this is a maintenance strategy that you put in place when you know that the criticality of that item is very low when you weigh up your criticality of the pieces of equipment in the entire system, right? So your breakdown maintenance or your corrective maintenance is where you go in after the fact. So you go in either to repair something that's already been damaged. So it's worn to replace or to a point where you're seeing that it's not functioning or operating the way it's supposed to. So it's not giving you the right level of quality of product that you're expecting to see, and it's not giving you the right level of, of efficiencies that you're wanting to see out of the entire system. So you go in there after the failure has occurred to go correct, to repair, to replace. It might be welding back in place. It might be replacing like for like. It might be a small mod so that it continues to operate the same way that it did before. But breakdown maintenance might be on items like light bulbs. So you wouldn't necessarily go predict that a light bulb is about to fail and then put in a time-based maintenance schedule for it. We tend to change light bulbs after they've worn out. Similarly, in some instances, there are certain items like belts. Sometimes um, industries run belts to failure. So you see a belt that is worn and it snaps before you replace it with an additional one or with a brand new belt. Others, because they're critical in what they're conveying, they are in a time-based maintenance schedule where they are replaced as soon as you start seeing wear along the strips of the belt. So just in summary, corrective or breakdown maintenance after the fact. So after you've had an issue, after you've gotten a, a breakage, after you've had your system down and it has failed, then only you go in there and you repair or you replace the piece of equipment. The third type of maintenance strategy is your predictive or condition-based maintenance. So this has a very expensive initial investment oftentimes, not always, but sometimes it does. 
but can be very beneficial in the long run. So it can prevent, number one, um, catastrophic failures, can prevent a uh, big on cost where you've got a breakdown that you really don't want to have, depending on your industry and the system that you've got in place. So condition-based maintenance or predictive maintenance, this is where you've got your accelerometers, vibration analysis, thermal analysis, where you're looking to see how your system is operating. And if you start seeing variations in number one, your frequencies or your um, oscillations are vibrating higher than what you'd expect, there is a change and a shift, then you know that something is not quite right. Some of the most common ones are your vibration analysis, where you use accelerometers also to see the oscillations of your pump or motors that you're trying to train and see. Some industries do noise surveys, so if the pitch or the sound of the noise or your decibel amps go up a notch um, than what it was before, you know that something's changed within your system. Some industries use temperature guns, so you see that there's a change in your temperature profile of some pieces of equipment that you're looking to maintain. And as soon as you see that there's a deviation, so you'll put in a set point, obviously you've got a tolerance, but as soon as you see a deviation above that set point or above the tolerance, you know that it's time to put that piece of equipment down and maintain it so that you don't have a bigger impact later on. It's not necessary to do condition-based maintenance on every single piece of equipment that you've got. Or it's not wise or necessary to have breakdown maintenance on every piece of equipment that you've got because of the impact, because of the cost, because of safety and quality and all of those different parameters that you're wanting to keep in check. So it is important that you do a criticality analysis across your plant to see which maintenance strategy is the best for each piece of equipment. So I will share in my next video how to apply your different maintenance strategies for your system and how to apply criticality analysis so you ensure that you've got the right maintenance strategy that is both number one safe, number two will give you the right quality and also is cost efficient for your production for the pieces of equipment that you've got. Comment below on which maintenance strategy that you've applied in your industry and which you find the most effective. Remember to live your best life, learn as you grow and leave for change. Shop.